Before we begin, I'm happy to announce that my Patreon is finally ready. Go and check it out for exclusive content and other perks. I hope to see you there soon. Hello, bonsoir, welcome. <laughs> this is my favorite ASMR sound. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> welcome, nice to meet you. I'm Storm. I thought it would be fun to do a video for this Q&A to celebrate 50,000 subscribers. So thank you if you've joined recently. Thank you if you've been here from the start. I'm so grateful you're here and you're enjoying my content. And I love reading all your comments. Um, and thank you for sending me so many questions. I've never done this before, guys, so bear with me. I'm gonna try and go through most of your questions. Um, I will probably do a French part at the end for the French speakers. And yeah, let's get into it. Why did you start making ASMR videos? When I worked as a voice actress for quite a while now, you know, about 10 years, and as much as it's a cool job to have, it's also a bit repetitive, especially when you work from home, and I wanted to be more creative with my voice, and I love ASMR, I have been consuming ASMR content for years, so I thought it would be a fun way to use my voice to create these stories and characters and build a community. Um, so that was the initial intent, to be more creative with my voice work. Um, why did I choose this particular niche? Well, initially I wanted to do a traditional ASMR channel, but it would have been a bit more difficult because I would have had to buy all the props, the costumes. Mm, I wasn't quite sure what kind of content I would make, but when I came across Afterglow's channel two years ago, I thought this is something I could do right away. I don't need the props, I don't need the space, because you also need to have space. Um, and this is something that I'm familiar with, you know, like voice work is what I do for a living, so I thought it would be the perfect way to have more fun with my voice, um, but also to provide comfort to people who need it. How do you feel making content that's inherently emotionally intimate, and to know that it helps a lot of people? That's the best part about it, really is the fact that I'm able to interact with you guys and just by reading all your feedback, knowing that I can bring a bit of joy, a bit of comfort, help someone sleep better, that's the best feeling, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so, yes, it's hard sometimes, because I know a lot of people who watch these videos are not happy in their lives and are going through a lot of difficult th stuff um, that I can't really do anything about. <laughs> but actually I can, and I, I think we all can in a way, by using our own skills, our own talents. And that's what I, that's what I wanted to do when I first created this channel. I actually released my, sorry about that, <laughs> I released my two first videos two years ago, but I clearly wasn't ready. I was not confident enough, I didn't really know what I was doing, I hadn't done my research, basically. So, recently I started thinking about it again because um, I'd kind of I'd left it in the background for two years, 
deleted those two first videos. I had 18 subscribers at the time, so I still managed to get some subscribers, but I wasn't ready. Um, and yeah, it just came back to me recently, because I'd been making these kinds of videos for my friends. And I thought, well, if my friends enjoy it, and I have so much fun making them, I'm sure a lot of other people could potentially enjoy this kind of content. Is there a specific trope that you like or hate? I don't really hate any tropes, but I'm not, I'm not really familiar with the monster girl trope, and it's not really something that I want to explore, I'm just not really drawn to it. However, I love playing fantasy characters like a vampire or a demon. But my favorite has to be the mean girls and the bullies. I just love, I just love an enemies to lovers um, script. They're just, I don't know, there's just something endearing about these characters. So I really like to play them. The yandere's are super fun to play. Um, that video I did, the crazy, terrifying yandere, was probably the most fun I'd had performing and recording, so I love that, but I think yandere's are a bit controversial, um, and they're a niche within a niche, so not everyone enjoys them, but I do. What's your favorite genre of music or favorite artist? I listen to a lot of different things depending on my mood. So if I'm angry, I'll listen to a lot of metal or rock. I love 80s pop, 80s rock. Um, I like jazz. I like female, powerful female voices like Lady Gaga, Tracy Chapman, Janis Joplin, Lauren Hill. I just admire these types of voices so much. Um, but yeah, my, my music taste really depends on my mood. Probably like everyone, I guess. I wouldn't listen to the same genre every day. You know, if I'm trying to relax, I'll put some Lana Del Rey in the background. Or if I'm angry, I'll put some corn on and do some headbanging. Do you sometimes relate to some of the scripts you see and work on? Yes, absolutely. I think, yes, probably more when I, I'm the one writing the scripts. I can't help but, you know, put little pieces of myself in my scripts. I think that's just a natural thing you do as a writer. So, for example, the stuck in the elevator with your childhood friend script. I did say in that pinned comment that it was the most personal and uh, most real written. And it was so interesting to get all these comments validating what I felt. And it just made me feel, yeah, there's so many people who feel like that. Like, don't, they're the one in the background. Whilst everyone else is moving on with their lives. So, that was very heartwarming. And I think that happens mostly when you or the one who writes the scripts. Because you feel that special connection with them. How do you go about writing scripts? And do you write all of them? No, I don't write all of them. I always put a disclaimer, because I get so many comments accusing me of stealing other people's work. But there are a lot of public scripts that a lot of um, voice artists use. So yes, you, you may hear the same script performed by various voice artists. But I think that's cool because each voice artist does it in their own way. Um, and there are some really good public scripts out there that I think deserve to be performed. Ideally, yes, I'd like to write all my scripts. But I'm taking it slow. What's your real accent and where are you from? Um, I'm originally from France. I grew up in France. I 
didn't have any English speakers around me. I always had a fascination for English particularly, but all languages in general fascinate me. And it's a family thing. My dad speaks three different languages. Um, I've always been into acting, and that plays a lot into it, you know. Um, using my voice in different ways to create different characters. So right now I'm choosing to speak with my French accent, because I know it's been highly requested, and a lot of people find it quite relaxing. But if I was playing a younger character, um, like a girl next door or a college student, I might use more of my higher range and my higher pitch. But if I was playing a demon, for example, I'd probably put on more of a British accent or change my intonation slightly to drag the words out a bit more and create that sensual vibe. I just really enjoy playing with my voice. I think you probably noticed by now. Why did you name your channel Message in a Bottle? Is it because of the song by the police? I love that song so much. I was listening to it today, actually. Um, but it's not because of the song. It's because of the idea behind the words. So I like the idea of sending out messages for anyone to find and having faith that those messages would be received by the people who need to hear them. Are you a student? I'm not a student. I have a degree in songwriting, um, which helps me with the sound design and picking songs. Um, but I'm not a student. I work as a voice actress. I also work with an elderly lady. I, I work as a companion. I live with her and I provide care for her. She's one of my best friends. And at the time I started this channel, I was also walking dogs. Um, but this ties into another question I got, which was, would you do ASMR full time? And yes, I want to. And this is why I'm putting so much effort into this channel. It's because it was always the goal to, for it to become my next job, my next creative endeavor. So, yes. Did you take voice acting classes at some point? I didn't take voice acting classes. I kind of learned everything by myself. And I was really, really bad in the beginning. But I did take a lot of acting classes. Um, workshops, drama school. Yeah. Um, not anymore, though. I've had enough of it. I just want to do it now. What's your zodiac sign? I'm an Aquarius. How are you handling being a creator? How do you deal with burnout? I'm handling it quite well, thank you. Trying to. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It happened a lot more quickly than I thought it would. Um, but I was putting out content twice a week in the beginning, so that probably explains that rapid growth as well. Um, yeah, I have a, a better schedule now. Um, I, I think the only way to deal with burnout is just to reduce your workload. What do you do in your spare time? I write. I love writing on roleplay forums, so I write with other people. It's one of my passions. I guess you could say that roleplay is literally my life. Um, I play Scrabble with my roommate. <laughs> I... Yeah, I lead a very quiet... I used to love video games. I used to play them as a kid. And as a teen, I really enjoyed the Quantic Dream games. They are my favorite games ever. And if you know them, you can probably tell where I get the cinematic effect inspiration from. It would be an absolute dream to work for them. Who inspires you? And who helps? 
helped you get to where you are today? I would say teachers. Teachers are so underrated, underappreciated, when they are literally the people that teach us so many things. And, um, yeah, I would say all the wonderful teachers I've had in my life, in my acting classes, and I also have a few celebrities that I look up to, like Lady Gaga, because I really like what she stands for, so it goes beyond her music. I like that, you know, she um, advocates for mental health, for example, so I admire these people that take it beyond their art and focus on, like, some important messages that they can share with the world through their art. What's a movie you could watch every day? Or your favorite new movie? I've just been to see Inside Out 2 today, and it really lifted my mood, made me realize how, how much I've let anxiety take control of my life lately. Um, so I really, uh, I love these films. I think they're so clever and so important for young people to watch. Uh, I also saw Challengers recently. That was a fun, weird one. Um, you can really tell that the actors had fun playing in it and the director had fun directing it. And I love that. I have a lot of favorite movies. Um, I would say my all-time favorite because I saw it when I was six and I fell in love with the music and the dancing is Dirty Dancing. I probably couldn't watch it every day, but it's one of those movies that just make me happy. Um, I'm a romantic at heart. I love romantic comedies, romantic films, just in general. Otherwise, I wouldn't have this channel, guys. Come on. Um, so, another one I really love is A Star is Born. Just love the acting, the chemistry between the actors. Um, yeah, I really like these films that feel organic. Like, they're not reading from a script. And uh, the acting is really natural. I like that. Do you listen to ASMR yourself? I do, especially when I want to go for a nap. That's the perfect time for me to listen to ASMR. Um, I love Sarah Lavender ASMR, JB ASMR, Afterglow, um, Deep Dark VA, and a few others. But I don't really listen to them to go to sleep. I can't really sleep with earphones in my ears, but I do just listen to them to relax. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? I love pineapple on pizza. I don't care what people think. I don't know why this is such a big debate. I'm half Italian, but I don't care. Sue me. Waffles or pancakes? Both. <laughs> You'll hear me say this a lot in life. Both. I like both. Are you bisexual? I like both. I just told you. What's an upload that surprised you with how well it performed? And an upload you wish got more attention? I was pretty surprised that my French made video did so well. I wasn't really expecting it to do well. Um, it was my first script as well. <laughs> so that was surprising. And the one that got the least attention is my Maeve Wiley video, which I did because I'm a big fan of the show, Sex Education, um, but it seemed that a lot of people just didn't know that show, so of course it wasn't very searched for and it didn't get a lot of views, which is a shame because I had fun making that video, but that's how, that's how it is, guys. You never know what's gonna work or not. You just have to do what you like at the end of the day, and that's what I'm doing. Even though I like to take other people's opinions and uh, preferences in consideration, because 
I'm creating content for you. I also just do it because I like it and I am always going to make content that I enjoy making. Do you have any pets? So, in the house I currently live in, there is a cat. And I love cats. I love all animals, to be honest. But this one, he's sweet, but he talks so much. He will not shut up, to be honest. He just... <laughs> that sounds really mean. But seriously, he just meows all the time. And it's cute in the beginning, but sometimes it gets a bit much. But I love him. He's really sweet. She said after degrading him. Um, yeah, I would love to have a dog at some point. Um, that would make me really happy. I think dogs are wonderful. And someone else asked what my favorite animal is. And I may maybe dogs because they're just so full of joy. What's your all time favorite food? Hmm. Probably veggie lasagna, guys. I'm sorry. That's why I put it in that video. And so many of you were like, veggie lasagna. Ew. I would never eat that. You don't know what you're missing. Seriously. You've probably not done it right because it's amazing. And that's it for the English part of this Q&A. So thank you so much for watching. You're welcome to watch the rest of this if you like. I'm just going to answer a few questions that I got on my French channel. But if you're already asleep, good night. And I'll see you in the next one. Bonsoir les francophones. J'espère que vous allez bien. Merci euh, de regarder mon contenu, que ce soit en français ou en anglais. Um, je tiens à ce que vous sachiez que, que la chaîne en français compte beaucoup pour moi même si j'ai pas pu m'y consacrer avec autant de ferveur que ma chaîne en anglais. Euh, Peut-être avec le temps, j'y reviendrai quand j'aurai justement le temps. <rire> Mais merci en tout cas, ça me fait plaisir de lire vos commentaires et de savoir qu'il y a une vraie communauté derrière cette niche en France, enfin dans les pays francophones du moins. Et, et cette niche est clairement sous-exploitée. Et c'est une des raisons pour lesquelles j'ai voulu partager mon contenu en français également. Et ça répond d'ailleurs à une des questions qu'on m'a demandé. Pourquoi la chaîne en anglais, puis la chaîne en français Tout simplement parce que je voulais faire découvrir ce contenu à un public francophone. Je trouve que c'est dommage qu'il n'y ait pas plus de chaînes de ce genre. Et... Je me suis dit de base que ça allait être facile de faire la vidéo en anglais puis en français, que je n'avais qu'à me réenregistrer. Mais finalement, je me suis rendu compte qu'il y a plus de travail que ça euh, pour faire les vignettes, pour refaire la vidéo, pour la réuploader sur YouTube. Je me suis rendu compte que ça me prenait énormément de temps en fait. Et que avec mon quotidien actuel, car j'ai d'autres jobs à côté, c'était un petit peu intenable. Mais voilà, si j'y reviens dans le futur, ce sera avec plaisir. Et j'espère que vous serez toujours là. Qu'est-ce qui t'a motivé à faire de la SMR Je voulais trouver un moyen d'être plus créative avec ma voix. Parce que ça peut être assez ennuyeux, le métier de voix off. Ça peut être super fun parfois. Mais c'est vrai qu'il y a beaucoup de répétitions dans le style de voix que je fais. Et ça manque un peu de ce, cet aspect créatif. Et donc tout simplement, j'avais envie de trouver une, une voix pour exprimer ma créativité dans ce travail. Vous travaillez seul ou à plusieurs Non, non, je suis toute seule. Je fais tout, à part les scripts parfois, j'en prends qui sont publics. Mais je préfère les écrire moi-même, si je peux. Pour l'instant, je ne peux pas vraiment faire ça à 100%. Mais sinon, le, la vidéo, etc., je, je fais tout moi-même. As-tu d'autres activités ou travail en parallèle de YouTube Oui, alors je travaille comme voix off, donc c'est mon 
job principal, on va dire. Euh, je travaille avec une personne âgée qui a Alzheimer. Je vis avec elle et je lui apporte de la compagnie. Et il euh, n'y a pas si longtemps que ça, je promenais des chiens aussi. Quel type de vidéo prends-tu le plus de plaisir à faire Je pense que ce sont les scripts où il y a le plus le côté acting qui entre en jeu. Euh, C'est-à-dire les scènes qui sont peut-être un petit peu plus dramatiques ou intenses. Euh, mais j'aime beaucoup aussi les scènes un peu plus flirty, sensuelles ou juste réconfortantes. Mais je pense que ouais, mon, mon contenu préféré, c'est quand je peux vraiment m'éclater avec et, euh, et faire appel à ces... ces... comment on dit Skills Je déteste faire du franglais, mais je trouve pas le mot. Euh, compétences, merci. <rire> euh, ces compétences en termes de jeu de théâtre. Est-ce que tu as déjà fait du doublage J'ai eu pas mal de gens qui m'ont demandé si j'ai fait du doublage. Non, j'en ai jamais fait, à part pour euh, un dessin animé, la chaîne YouTube d'un dessin animé assez connu. Mais j'ai seulement fait quelques-unes de leurs vidéos, les voix des personnages. C'était super amusant. J'aimerais beaucoup en faire plus. Mais bon. Il faut habiter à Paris pour faire du doublage. Je pense que c'est le, le noyau, ce qui n'est pas le cas actuellement. Donc, euh, donc voilà, c'est pas trop une possibilité, mais j'ai toujours adoré le doublage, j'ai toujours été fascinée, j'ai toujours voulu en faire. Est-ce que tu regardes ou écoutes du contenu ASMR J'en écoute plus énormément, mais souvent quand je m'apprête à faire une sieste, je me mets euh, une vidéo en fond pour me relaxer. Et en général c'est en anglais, parfois j'en écoute en japonais, je trouve que c'est une langue assez relaxante à écouter. Quelle est ta couleur préférée J'aime beaucoup le rouge et le violet. Que pensent les gens quand tu leur dis que tu fais de l'ASMR Mais en fait ils comprennent pas trop. <rire> euh... Ils comprennent pas trop le concept, parce que je pense que l'idée de l'ASMR qu'ils ont c'est... Des gens qui sont en costume ou qui font du roleplay. Mais vu que mes chaînes, euh, je montre pas mon visage, je, je n'utilise que ma voix. Ils comprennent pas trop en fait comment ça marche. Du coup, je dois leur montrer des extraits pour euh, leur faire comprendre comment fonctionne le concept. Et il y a beaucoup de gens qui me demandent, mais c'est comme un dessin animé en fait. Et et ils comprennent pas forcément qui écoute ça ou pourquoi ils écoutent ça. Du coup, je dois leur expliquer qu'il y a un côté réconfortant, que ça peut être juste divertissant d'écouter une histoire, comme un audiobook. Mais ouais, une fois que je leur montre les extraits, ils comprennent un peu mieux. Comment fais-tu pour parler aussi bien français Alors, je suis française, tout simplement. <rire> euh, J'ai toujours adoré les langues. J'ai commencé à apprendre l'anglais quand j'avais 10 ans, seule. Je sais pas trop comment expliquer cet attrait ou cette capacité pour les langues, mais c'est quelque chose que j'ai toujours eu, c'est quelque chose qui probablement me vient de mon père, qui est lui-même très doué dans les langues. Donc je pense que c'est c'est dans les gènes, probablement. Et, et ouais, c'est une de mes passions. Est-ce que tu es une IA Mais oui, bien sûr comme tu peux le constater, je suis un robot. Je n'existe pas vraiment. Je suis alimentée par une prise électrique. Non, je ne suis pas une IA. Je sais que ma voix peut paraître différente quand je parle en français, quand je parle en anglais. Je ne sais pas trop pourquoi. Euh, mais bon, j'espère que tu reconnaîtras quand même que c'est bien ma voix. Et, et voilà, je suis bien vivante. Merci beaucoup d'avoir